Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to Drafting with Data, the video series where I break down the 17 land draft data so you can emerge with actionable takeaways and learn how to interpret the numbers yourself. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to evaluate cards that are very good contextually. But before I get to that, I want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for more draft content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, feedback, and any other questions you have about how to interpret the numbers so I can maybe make a video about them in the future. So with 17 lands draft data, before we get to the cards, I just want to remind you that 17 lands is a site that takes user data, the users sign up and they can track their own data. And as part of that, 17 lands aggregates all of those numbers so you can get actual data because your sample size will be large enough where you can actually kind of come to some conclusions about what cards are good or bad or archetypes or things like that. So it's basically a bunch of users in the system and there's a bunch of games played and a bunch of stats about those games. The first thing you should always look at when you're analyzing cards is go to the format color ratings tab and then scroll all the way to the bottom and see what this number says here, all decks. This is the win percentage on average of a 17 lands user in this format. So 56% will be our baseline for analysis. And that is going to be whether a, uh, if a card is above 56%, it's above average. If it's below 56, it's below average. So it's not just a 50, 50 because on, in general, the 17 lands users are more invested in magic and they tend to be better than the average player. So instead of having a 50, 50 win rate, they have a 56% win rate on average. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about evaluating cards in context. And so to do that, I'm going to be looking at very simple numbers. Uh, the ever in hand win rate, which I've talked about in previous videos in this series, but basically it is the number of the percentage of games that you win when the card is ever in your hand. So if you see, for example, a card like Meat Hook Massacre, if you ever draw that in a game, your win rate is a staggering 67.5% because the card is just so good. But we're going to be looking at the blue common specifically and because there's a very interesting example here for how to evaluate a card in context. So looking at the blue commons, it's no surprise that Organ Hoarder is number one. This card is absolutely fantastic. One of the best, com it is just the best common in the set. It's just got a massive win rate. But coming down this list, you see Shipwreck Sifters as a card that has over a 60% win rate. And so this is where the context comes into play, because it's not a matter of, is this card just generically good? Because it seems like it's got a lot going on, but maybe isn't inherently powerful. It's more so about where is this card good? And so on 17 lands, there is actually a filter where you can filter by the different decks that a card gets played in. And that's what we're going to be using today, specifically looking at Shipwreck Sifter, though you can do this when you see any card that's pretty anomalous or a card that you're not sure whether or not it should be at the, near the top of the list and kind of think, well, is this card actually good? And the reason Shipwreck Sifters is so high is because like over 60% is kind of like an impressive stat here. It's got 36,000 games played, so nowhere near the 100,000 that the Organ Hoarder gets played, which should immediately tell you that the card is more contextual. It's not really getting played as much as the cards like 83,000 for Revenge of the Drowned, 100,000 for Organ Hoarder. It's not getting played as much for starters, so maybe that means it's only getting played in certain decks. And in this case, if you search white blue decks, you can see that Shipwreck Sifters is the number two blue common for uh, these white blue decks. And actually, of the 36,000 games played, almost 20,000 of those were Shipwreck Sifters being played in white blue. So most, a lot of, like over half of the games with this card are in the archetype where it's best, where it has a 63.1% win rate. So Shipwreck Sifters, very good in white blue. Just for some contrast here, let's look at how Shipwreck Sifters performs in the other colors. If you go to blue, red, Shipwreck Sifters all the way down here at barely like under 51%. So you lose five percentage points on average almost by playing Shipwreck Sifters. So that, that's a little bit biased. I shouldn't be saying that exactly. Basically, blue, red, as an archetype has a lower win percentage on average so you would expect it to do worse in blue red decks because the average win rate of a blue red deck is lower than the win rate of an average blue white deck but look at all these commons basically you can see which how many commons perform better than shipwreck sifters in a blue red deck versus how many perform better than in a white blue deck so for white blue decks it's like the number two common and like a decent amount better than the next common almost two percentage points higher but in a blue red deck it's like way down this list and not a card you need to prioritize so that's the sort of thing where you're like if you're in white blue maybe you prioritize shipwreck sifters but you don't just take it as if it's the fifth best blue common similarly you can look at blue black and a very commonly played deck and you can see shipwreck sifters there's just a billion cards above shipwreck sifters on this list it's just about kind of like a mediocre card on this list when you're looking at the blue black deck as well uh you can also just we'll just look at the other colors for completion's sake so we looked at white blue we looked at blue red we looked at blue black and finally we'll finish off with 
the green blue where is it and it looks like in blue green shipwreck sifters is actually a reasonably solid common as well in the games where it gets played again small sample size relative to the number so you need this indicates that you need a specific deck before you're willing to play the shipwreck sifters always keep that in mind when you're looking at the numbers but it looks like it's one of the more powerful commons in blue green when those decks come together that can support it so maybe needs a little bit of extra work but can work out another thing you can do is if you want to compare it to a baseline for that archetype if you go to the format color ratings, you can actually see how well each two color combinations. So Azorius has a 59.3% win rate on average, but Shipwreck Sifters in a blue white deck has like a 63% win rate. So it's above average for that deck. Whereas, as I was saying, blue red has a low win percentage on average. So even though Shipwreck Sifters is not one of the top performing commons in blue red, you would still expect it to have a lower win rate regardless because blue red as a deck so when you're as a deck is weaker so you want to make sure that when you are looking at that card rating that you're evaluating it in that sort of context now i want to use another example of a card where you kind of get the opposite conclusion drawn almost so we're just going to refilter the data so that we can get the numbers that we want so instead of looking at the blue commons this time which we were looking at them just before where we had we were like wow why is the you can click this number to filter by top to bottom you make wow why was shipwreck sifter so high an interesting one to look at is red where you're like wow neonates rush being the number one red common here above moon ranger slash which maybe isn't something that would be expected and it's by almost a full percentage point now the data sample size is smaller than the moon ranger slash which maybe means that the card only fits into a certain home just as we were talking about with the um uh, shipwreck sifters from a second ago so maybe you see look at these numbers you're like wow neonates rush is higher than i thought it would be because the card maybe doesn't look as powerful as Moon Ranger Slash. So maybe this card is only good in black red, similar to how Shipwreck Sifters is only good in blue white. And so you check the red black win percentage. And so you see 55.8 on average and you see black red like, wow, 56 percentage points. So it's still, it's, it's not like a massive boost. So that means that in, in the, even though half of the data points almost are getting played in black red. So if you look at uh, all decks, 16,000, and then you look at specifically black red, finding these numbers is kind of hard sometimes but it's like half of the games are being played in black red where it's got a pretty solid win percentage and you're like well maybe that means it's only good in black red but it's percentage points don't noticeably increase like the way that shipwreck sifters is was like 63 percent in blue black and 50 percent 51 percent and there's not a lot of commons that are over like yeah it doesn't move a ton but let's just look at some of the other colors for some context here because if you look at white red you see new Nets rush still really kind of close to the top of the charts here at number three even though it's not getting played nearly as much here so coming in at number three in red green neonates rush coming in at number two and then if you look at the final one that we haven't looked at yet of blue red you see neonates rush is also coming in at number one and actually has a higher win percentage in blue red than it does in blue in black red which you might think of as the color combination where this would be most supported because it's just very interesting to think about because this card looks very contextual and it's easy to think oh neonates rush it's performing well based on the data that must be because it's only good in black red but you can actually kind of look at the numbers and be like well it looks like it's actually performing in every red deck in the format so it's one of the top few commons in each of the colors instead of just being only good in one or two of the colors as was the case with shipwreck sifters now the sample size is not as high so again that could mean that there are certain decks that it's very good in but that could also just mean that the card doesn't look as good and so people aren't playing it as much so make keep in mind that just looking at the numbers is not really enough to get actionable takeaways. You kind of want to think about why they might be thinking that way. And uh, that's just one of the ways you can evaluate some of the commons in context. For another example of a card, let's just go to this last case of Festival Crasher, which if you're looking at blue-red, it's one of the top five commons. It performs pretty decently well in blue-red. Let's scroll down to what this card is another sort of card that's like, well, this card is good in blue red spells, but is it good in other homes? Because it looks like the sort of card that would be good in a blue red spells deck, but can it find success elsewhere? So let's just look at it in all decks. Festival Crasher coming in here at 53.2. And then if you go to blue red, you can just go, well, Festival Crasher goes up, up to 54 percentage points. You got 10,000 games played in blue red. I didn't, I forgot to check the number in uh, general. So it's almost half the games it's played, it's played in blue red. Uh, and then white red decks, not really. I mean, pretty much dead on average in white red decks. And then you can just kind of go through like red green decks. Festival Crasher kind of like, where is it? There he is down here. Not really at home in the green red decks. Uh, not played super often there. And then black red is the last one. I'm fine, kind of bad at finding the numbers, but you can just kind of see like Festival Crasher kind of falling down the totem pole a little bit, but still kind of relatively solid. So those are just the ways you look at cards that maybe look like they have one specific home. Um, 
and like Neonates Russian Festival Crasher cards that like like that. Shipwreck Sifters is kind of a card that looks like that. And those are just the sorts of things that you can do with the data when you are diving into it a little bit deeper. And so if there's a card that looks a little bit odd to you with its ranking, try searching for how it's doing based on the decks that it gets played in. Yeah, anyway, that is going to do it for this episode of Drafting with Data. If you made it all the way till the end of the video in the comments section down below, leave hashtag context matters to let me know you made it all the way till the end of this video. Remember to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will talk to you next time.